Hi folks, so for today's video I thought I might do a bit of a workflow tour, just sort of talking a little bit about my uh, distribution and the software that I use and how I've got it set up and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and it's substantially different to uh, when I last made a video of this type where I was running Manjaro. Uh, I had a much older display actually, I've finally upgraded my monitor. The old one, which I had for about 15 years, uh, was a 1440 by 900 tiny monitor. I was always getting heckled for it, so I finally upgraded. This is just your standard uh, 1080p monitor here. It's really good, it looks really crisp. Uh, I hope it lasts as long. Um, I didn't bother getting a, a 4K monitor or anything like that because quite frankly, I think that it's a lot of extra stuff that you don't really need and I tend to prefer sort of safe hardware choices. And um, and actually on that note, I've decided to make a few safer software choices as well. So I've gone from Manjaro, which is based on Arch, but has a substantial amount of changes done to it um, and, and sort of set up in a significantly different way to what you might expect from Arch. And I've gone from that to Linux Mint, which is Ubuntu based. Uh, and I'm a big fan of Arch. I'm a big fan of Manjaro. I'm a big fan of Ubuntu and the Ubuntu based distributions. And of course, I'm a big fan of Linux Mint. Um, but I've decided to to take a shot on Linux Mint, the standard 64-bit um, Cinnamon edition. Uh, Cinnamon has changed a fair bit since I last used it. I really like it. It seems really slick, really smooth. Um, and, uh, and, and the whole distribution did not require much setting up. And I always have a soft spot for distributions that are easy to, to get going. Um, you never know when you have to do a nuke and pave. You never know when you have to completely wipe the hard disk drive and start again. So a distribution that is just gets you up and running in less than a couple of hours is really great. Now Manjaro was always very good for that, as is Linux Mint, and I think they're very good for different reasons. One is that Manjaro has a lot of great stuff in the software repository, um, and, and you can just blitz through on the command line all of the different software setups, uh, all, all of the various different pieces of software that you need, and you're up and running in no time at all. With, with Linux Mint, they make a lot of great out-of-the-box choices as well, which I, I don't think they get enough credit for, because Linux Mint was the distribution many years ago that actually kind of got me comfortable with Linux and actually w w played a significant part in making Linux my go-to um, operating system or, or set of operating systems really because um, you know even to to more seasoned Linux users um, your distribution choice probably doesn't matter because after a couple of months of tweaking it here and there it'll probably end up in broadly the same place um, when you're you're new to it you don't really know what Linux can do or, or, or how Linux varies from the operating system that you might be more used to and as a result um, would really benefit from having some some good choices made for you. And you see this here and there in, in the Linux world. And I think that um, obviously distributions are different, uh, are better than this and others. For example, your stock vanilla arch, you wouldn't want to put that in in front of, or wouldn't want to put uh, a new Linux user in front of, of Arch and just tell them to go. Yeah, admittedly, the documentation, the Getting Started Guide, really good as well. And if someone was willing to put in the time to learn Arch, they could probably get through it. But most people do kind of want um, a bit, you know, a bit more in the way of training wheels when it comes to distributions. And again, this is all personal preference. Like I said, after a couple of months, uh, almost any distribution that you choose, you'll end up in broadly the same place, which is something that's, you know, custom molded for you. It's like, you know, a nice pair of shoes, you know, you've got to sort of, it takes a little while for it to, you know, sort of, you know, for you to, to, to break them in, I guess. Um, but yes, Linux Mint. So why did I choose Linux Mint? Well, Linux Mint is based on the long-term support Ubuntu releases. And, they, and as such, Linux Mint has a five yearly support cycle. That's really, really, really good because it, it means that you can just put something on a device and you don't have to touch it for several years. Now at the moment, um, I'm running the latest version which is supported up until 2023, um, but there will be later on, presumably in April, May, June, uh, a new major release of Linux Mint which will, um, which will then uh, be supported up until 2025. Regardless, it's still a good number of years before I even have to consider uh, an upgrade. And what I quite like about it is with Linux Mint is you have this base level which is very low maintenance. And a lot of that is what came what it came down to. Manjaro required regular large updates, um, which whilst was very good at keeping your software up to date with the latest versions or near to the latest versions, um, it required 
uh, I would say a high. It was higher on the end of maintenance. A lot of it was very smooth. A lot of it was um, was ran ran well. And one of the things that is quite good about rolling distributions is when something breaks, it's usually a small thing. When you have to do a whole. Uh, overhaul for a new operating system there might be a few things that all break at once and then that's a little bit more of a project to get things back on track with a rolling distribution something might you know oh you have to fix that there fix that there and it's a very small manageable challenges that happen over a long period of time a lot less of um a lot less of an overall project whereas when you're doing big updates regularly uh, or big big updates irregularly rather or not irregularly but over you know further apart um then it can require that you've you know, it can require a different approach to uh, problem solving. That being said, though, of course, when you've got something like Linux Mint, it kind of in many ways makes the best of both worlds. Linux Mint uh, is an Ubuntu-based distribution that supports flat packs, and because it's an Ubuntu-based distribution, supports snaps. Now, these days, both flat, flat, in my experience, flat packs and snaps work really well on almost any distribution I try them on. They're really good. I know that there are people in the Linux community that prefer maybe the old way of doing things, but quite frankly, between snaps, flat packs, and app images, they've solved far too many problems for me to ignore them now. So what I've decided to do is have a very low maintenance distribution, and I think Linux Mint was probably the lowest maintenance I can think of, and then have flat packs, snaps, app images on top of that distribution simply uh, so that I can have the latest versions of the software while at the same time having a rock solid stable distribution beneath it running it all. So far that's proven to be a really good workflow. Now predominantly, and I'm going to show you, give you a little bit of a demonstration here now, uh, I've got my apps here. My app images, I've got an app image folder, which is actually synced into Dropbox. So whenever I have a new app image that I use, it immediately goes to all of my machines, which are now predominantly ThinkPads. Um, and uh, so I've even got LibreOffice. I've got the, 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 the versions of LibreOffice. I've got Krita, I've got KeePass. I've got uh, various versions of Caden Live. Uh, I've got Olive. I was trying out Olive. Uh, I've got Scribus. Uh, I've got op I've got Open. I've got Delta Delta Chat's really good. Uh, if you haven't already, check out my video on Delta Chat. It is the um, it basically adds a instant messaging interface to your email, um, so you uh, so that it just makes email a lot more accessible and easier to use. I've got Discord there as well. I've got Franz. I haven't really used Franz or FreeTube. I've got GIMP there, the app image. Um, I got Jitsi, Jitsi Meet as well. So that's a nice little. Um, conferencing program and these are for the most part uh, with the except with some obvious exceptions like steam and OBS um, these this is predominantly my workflow and it's really good like it, it means I can take it on it it doesn't matter what my distribution beneath it is all of these app images work they're all really well compiled uh, and put together and I just use them on whatever distribution I happen to be on uh, I've got a uh, entryware here with MX Linux on really good especially for lower-end hardware the app images work the same like this is fantastic uh, app images are absolutely beautiful and the fact of the matter is i can upgrade them when i want i'm subscribed to all of the rss feeds of all of these projects so that i do know when a new version is available but i upgrade when i want and what and what i can have is two uh, versions simultaneously installed on my machine so if an upgrade causes regressions and bugs that weren't there before i can simply pop back to the original app image and wait until another version has been brought out or or a, a fix has been brought out or something i can wait until the storm passes that is a lot more difficult on any other uh distribution there will be people, no doubt, that will sort of defend their various distributions, saying, yeah, but you can do it on this, all you've got to do is type rollback, da-da-da. Yeah, but it's the fact of the matter is app images by far and away make it the most convenient and straightforward and easiest way to do that. There are ways to embed them into menus and so forth, but just far, you know, popping up a window and just double-clicking on it really is just fine, um, to be honest. It's just a piece of cake. You can also use app images quite well from the command line as well. So uh, all, all in all, app images out of, you know, are, are to, quite frankly, have solved so many problems for me that I completely uh, I think I think they're absolutely wonderful I know that some people like to just fire off pacman dash uh, s y y u and suddenly everything's all updated and that's great when it works and it works most of the time but not every single time and I, I like keeping just a steady course and you know it might be that I'm probably less interested in the tinkering around with the slight customizations of my distribution than I used to be it might be because I've got less time or it might be because I want to spend more time for example streaming I love streaming over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash chrisware. Um, 
that I don't want to ever have to, you know, like have to postpone a stream or, or anything like that on the basis of, of technical difficulties. So, yeah, all things considered, app images are, are my go-to. Now, this version of, of OBS that I currently use is a flat pack, and that flat pack's great. It makes good use of the um, the hardware uh, that's available, the NVIDIA um, uh, drivers and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's that's really good. This this uh, Ryzen processor is actually fast enough that I could do it all on software and it wouldn't be a problem. Um, and uh, yeah, there are a few things. That, so feel free to chide me for. So I love the menu here, by the way, for uh, for for um, uh, Cinnamon. It's just so simple. Um, someone I, I, I've I've introduced someone uh, to to Linux in you know in my offline life, uh, and I put them onto to this very uh, version of Linux Mint, and they just jumped in and went with. There were there were zero questions, like they got the idea. The menu. I told them that they could search the menu, so you could type, for example, Fire. You got Firefox there. Um, you've got the the panel works really well. You've got the system tray icon. Like it just works and is intuitive, and it's great. And yeah, like. Zero, zero issue, zero issue. Not, not anything close to an issue. It's wonderful. Um, but anyway, uh, one of the things is I've got. So I've got a few things here. So I've got Jitsi Meet. That is actually the Jitsi app image there. Good old transmission. I've got Steam there. Uh, Hex Chat as well for IRC. Uh, that's my my preferred uh, IRC client. Um, but I do have Chromium web browser, and I just got to say that the only reason I do use the Chromium web browser is for Stadia. I've actually quite. Uh, quite enjoyed Stadia lately, and I'm looking forward to its full release, where I'm hoping that they're going to drop a few more games there. Um, but I was, <laughs> interestingly enough, I was kindly gifted a game uh, on Steam uh, quite some time ago by um, by a friend of mine, and it was 100 gig. And I also found out, uh, after all of the updates as well, Hitman 2, a game that I stream very regularly, is 100 gig too. The fact of the matter, you know, like with, with, uh, with Stadia, the, f the fact that you can just play a 100 gig plus game uh, without even having to download it. I had to wait several hours um, to download Hitman and uh, and I think it was Dirt Rally that was the, the other game that was 100 gig. It was, you know, like we could talk about owning games until the cows come home, but I don't have the disk space for that anymore. Do you know what I mean? Like games have become so large that they've become so inaccessible to that regard. So I must... Um Anyway, I'm kind of getting sidetracked, and that might be a uh, video for a, a subject for a different video, perhaps. But uh, in terms of my um, terminal, I just used the, the one that came with Mint. In fact, when it comes to the basic tools, uh, it is the stuff that I'm using with, with Mint. LibreOffice is installed here out, out of the box on Linux Mint, which is fine. I haven't taken it off, um, despite the fact that I'll probably end up still using my app images. It comes with Celluloid. Celluloid's really good. I really like celluloid. I've added in MPV media player as well for something a bit more lightweight, bouncy. I like the key, uh, the shortcut keys for, for MPV as well. But celluloid is just a front end for MPV. Uh, so I've got the uh, OBS software here. That's the flat pack. I also installed Flo uh, Pulse Audio Volume Control. I really like the control that that gives you over your sound. Oh, I've got Rhythm Box here. I usually take that off. I'm very, I'm very much a... Uh, play your mp3 through the uh, file manager kind of person um having i suppose i could give rhythm box a shot uh what have i got here i got gpick uh for cut picking out color haven't used that simple scan's good that does the job and i don't even know i don't, I don't even know what drawing is so these are some of the games um uh, i got hitman hitman 2 here so there's two hitman 2 games as well by the way which is a bit bizarre uh yeah 100 gig whatever wow and i got all of these i do have keypass x c installed um, here as well as in app image. I always keep the app image around just in case I can't install it and because the thing is one of the things you don't want to be without is your password database. And I, I manage all of my password stuff offline as you should do. Um, and it's been a it's a very smooth workflow that I um, uh, I find quite straightforward and, and, and secure enough for my uh, for my purposes there. Um, I have a home directory here as well. Oh yeah, what I've done here is I've created system links for music and pictures and documents uh, and apps as well. And these are all um, linked into the Dropbox folder. So everything I've got is synced across all my devices with Dropbox. Dropbox is really good for that. And Dropbox comes with a... Um, uh, you, you can just install it through the, um, the add remove images... Not add remove applications, the software installer here. Uh, it's been a while since I opened this because I usually uh, just uh, do the old um, uh, do the old command line stuff. But here we go. Uh, this is actually really good, really good for straightforward instally stuff. Um, of course, 
uh, the Mint software manager makes the cardinal mistake of promoting Firefox, despite the fact that it comes already bundled with the operating system. But it does have a, a like a, a few editors picks here, which I think are quite good. I quite like the idea. Uh, you can install Minecraft. Quite frankly, folks, I it always breaks my heart a little bit when I see people on Linux play Minecraft when they could be playing Mind Test. Mind Test is is you know is open source and lovely, lovely little game there. Um, you know we've we've sort of built it ourselves and it's basically as old as mine minecraft as well but anyways i mean you know it's one thing if you want to uh play mine minecraft as well so you can install that you can install wine as well that's you know wine's always good got some known you know all these things um so yeah oh and you can even browse uh, browse flat packs uh so you can get you can get telegram and discord and uh audio effects for pulse pro interested. bit warden there for those of you that are interested in that caden live so you got you got you got your your um which I assume, uh, which I assume, yeah, it comes from Flat Hub. So it's the same. It's the same install that you get from Flat Hub, which is pretty good. Uh, and I believe that Flat Pack, Flat, Flat Packs are um, updated uh, as part, you know, uh, with the rest of your system as well, um, because I did see Flat pack updates in the in the startups uh, which is pretty good but I'm more like again I, I tend to go to the command line for these kind of things and upgrading uh, or updating your uh, your flat packs is quite uh, straight straightforward in that regard but there are, yeah all in all there's not really too much else to show like it's a really I, I like the cinnamon desktop I like a lot of the desktops to be honest these days but the cinnamon desktop uh, is just really nice out of the box it has a nice uh, modern workflow uh, on the uh, the welcome screen for, for Linux Mint you can actually uh, select a layout that makes it look a lot more like the traditional version of uh, Linux Mint, which is a bit more Windowsy or a bit more, should we say, Windows 70, whereas this is a bit more maybe Windows 10 uh, That sounds weird uh, and, un un and unnecessarily cutesy, but <laughs> there you go. There, apparently, there are things like desktop applets that you can you can install, but for, all in all, I kind of like keeping these things disk uh, 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 sort of you know, free of bells and whistles. Uh, I have taken the desktop icons off the desktop, as you can tell here. I've never really felt much of use for them. I love this. They come, it comes with them great, um, uh, some great background wallpapers as well. Um, so that's not, I know, I'm not too fan of the blurry effects as well. What about lake? Oh, wow. Look at that. That's beautiful. All right. I'm going to keep that one for a while. I like that. Usually it's a picture I've taken. Um, so, uh, but I think this time I I really like that. The colors are beautiful. Um, so yeah, uh, is there anything more in the way of my software choices that I want to let you guys know about? I use the Firefox browser by default. I'm not going to bring up my Firefox browser because I've got all my uh, bookmarks and all of my um, add-ons and all that kind of stuff there that I probably don't want to uh, advertise on the internet. Um, games, accessories. So it is quite a straightforward, uh, it is quite a straightforward um, uh, I do I do quite like the the previews here. All of this is customizable by the way. I may very well end up uh, turning it all off uh, at the end of it. But yeah, most of my uh, oh there's also an interesting program here, Mark Text, uh, which is a nice little um uh, I think I could probably open it up for you. There we go. So it's a little bit white here. We can change the theme to yeah. Uh, and then we could do it's just a markdown editor. Um, title 2 so there you go and that's it so it's a nice little like it basically is a word processor for uh, for markdown you can save it as markdown you could also you can export it file export as html pdfs and that's all good or you could just save it as a uh, as, as plain text as it is um, and we don't save that. So there we go. I like the desktop effects as well, but again, you can turn all of this stuff off. Uh, all in all, with Linux Mint, um, it provides out of the box a very low maintenance, very straightforward Linux distribution. I absolutely love it. Um, the software, um, the add remove software program is really good. Um, I've had no problem with uh, with the printer drivers as I have done with other distributions before. Uh, it even comes with Redshift out of the box. Redshift is this thing which, uh, during the evening hours, uh, adjusts your uh, the entire desktop to a to a to a uh, you know like a slightly more orange, slightly more red hue, so that it uh, reduces the blue light, which I, I find is very comfortable. Um, 
but yeah, and it, it comes with all the software that I need. But for for the most part, I I almost at this stage now actively seek out app images um, first anyway because it is just such a great you know workflow for me. So I think that's about it from uh, from me today. To be honest, uh, it's not the most exciting workflow. I decided to keep with something very low maintenance, Linux Mint, and I've decided to uh, to use app images. Um, as my primary uh, software selection, but the flat uh, the flat packs that are bundled in with um, uh, with with Linux Mint are uh, are pretty good too. When it comes to installing snaps, I believe that's something that has to still be done through the command line, but I'm not a hundred percent certain. Um, and I know that the newer versions of Ubuntu. Um, post the latest long-term support release make much more uh, higher use of snaps so I would imagine when Linux Mint 20 comes around the the next major upgrade or no, me, next major version rather uh, that they may very well consider making more use of snaps I don't know I'm not a member of the you know the development team or anything like that um, but um, and that'd be all right, but but snaps as uh, you know works through the command line uh, but to be honest um, more often than not um, you know, flat packs work, you know, app images work as well. And there is a decent selection in the repositories as well. Um, but for example, with Mind Test, the, uh, the the game that I play a lot, uh, there is a version 4 in the um, native Ubuntu repositories, and there is a version 5 in the flat pack uh, repository. And when you're uh, finding servers to play on, uh, you have to match the version, version 4 to version 4, and version 5 to version 5. Uh, so... It, and it, it's basically it's a major upgrade um, there. So um, with I suppose with this distribution, you get the kind of the best of both worlds, in that you can install the native r r version four for version four servers and version five for version five ver servers. Uh, sorry, I'm getting uh, I'm getting a tangent now. And also, you can get mind test on uh, app image. I think you can get version five on an app image. I think there's a version four going around, but I never managed to get it to work. And that is a tangent that I've just tried to rush through as quickly as possible now. But anyway, I thought I might give you a bit of a demonstration. Uh, I'm afraid there's probably not too much left to show, really. Um, but really, just sort of explain my approach to my my new workflow. Um, I do have ThinkPads here, which um, again, you know, are, are pretty straightforward. Um, this ThinkPad that I'm working on uh, right now is is, is going to be having um, the same Linux Mint. I mean, Linux Mint is basically uh, piecemeal going to be on all of my uh, machines, I think, at this stage. I quite like MX Linux, which I got running on my Entraware box. Uh, I've got Ubuntu Mate here running on my Levo Lenovo Think uh, my ThinkPad 270, I think it is on my right here, uh, which is an i7, which is lovely. Um, I don't know, like, but the thing is, right? Is this, you know, I'm not. I don't really have any criticisms against the Ubuntu-based distributions. They're also amazing. I could easily do what I'm doing in with this workflow with an based Ubuntu. I could easily do it with Fedora, although Fedora doesn't have a long-term support release. So there's that. Um, yeah, all in all, I think nowadays your actual choice of Linux distribution is is has never been <laughs> has never been less important. Like they, they, you know, like there are there are d distinctions in terms of their out of the box support. There is distinctions in terms of how their repositories are up upgraded. So if I was running an Arch based distribution, um, I would have to download bigger updates more often. Um, and you know deal with that i've decided to go with something pretty low maintenance with my uh my app images on top of that and uh but yeah with with the uh you know the app images the flat packs and the snaps these days uh there really is um there's a lot more choice when it comes to the um, distribution beneath it as well. So um, it'd be interesting to see how long I stick around with Linux Mint. But uh, but yeah, uh, basically the long short of it is because the, the updates would probably be smaller and a little bit, um, you know, just sort of more e easier and straightforward and, 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 you know, I suppose less disruptive to the system or, or, you know, would do less with the system and therefore keep something, keep it maybe a little bit more stable on the underlying level. And then that will give me a bit more freedom with the applications on top of it, I guess. Uh, anyway, that's the theory. We'll see if it pans out. Thank you guys, of course, very much for joining me. And um, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments section below. Also, 
all of these videos that I make go over on my Peertube uh, channel, uh, so you should check that out. Uh, what I will do is I'll put a link to my website, chrisware.uk, in the description below, and that's got a list of all of my social media platforms uh, that I'm on, so if you guys want to check that out, and some, not all of it's techie stuff, I take some photographs and I have a pixel-fed account where I put you know some nice scenic shots and that kind of stuff, uh, and that's a lot of fun as well. So if you guys want to check all of that kind of stuff out, uh, let me... Um, yeah, let me, I'll put the link in the uh, description uh, down below and you guys can check it out. I also have RSS feeds for a lot of my social media accounts that uh, so you don't necessarily have to be on that platform to, to follow me there. Just uh, use the RSS URL and uh, put that into your reader and you should be able to follow me there as well. So anyway, uh, but yeah, uh, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Toodaloo.